This tutorial is intended to show you how to set up a multimode bidirectional duplex test on the 945 quad with ICER. Two units are needed to do the test, a main unit and a remote unit. The main unit will be the unit that will create the files, run the tests, and store document testing. Once you turn on the test set, use the main unit and select OLTS from the main screen. You will see that the unit can do single-mode simplex, single-mode duplex, and multi-mode duplex testing. The first step is to configure your test set to do multi-mode duplex bidirectional testing. You will use the main unit to build the file. You can build the specific test configuration that can include what standards will be used for pass-fail. Multiple standards criteria can be applied. To either select a pre-built test configuration or build one specific to your testing requirements, follow those steps. So for testing multimode duplex bidirectional, you will create a test configuration. Select default from the list. Select duplicate. Name your test configuration. As for example, Multimode Duplex Bidirectional OM4. Try to be descriptive. Then, select OK. Then this new configuration will be highlighted. Select Modify and you can now create exactly what is needed to satisfy your testing requirement. Across the top you will see multiple tabs. Select Properties tab. Here you will specify how the test will be created. This will be the permanent setup whenever you choose Multimode Duplex Bidirectional OM4. Then, below, under Reference Method, note that it can be selected during the initial setup or can be part of the configuration file. However, one test cord is preferred. Then, under the field Test Cord Type, again, it can be selected during initial setup or can be part of the configuration file. But please note that Reference Grade Jumpers should be used. Moving on to Bidirectional Loss, Worst Value is typically used. This means that what will be used for documentation will be the worst loss in either A to B or B to A measurements. Below, the duplex measurement should be set to bidirectional. And finally, under the link ORL measurement field, it's a no, as it is not needed for multimode testing. Moving on to the next tab, link definition, you will need to make the following adjustments. Under the fiber type menu, select the fiber type that will be tested with this configuration file. This can be OM4 as an example. Then regarding connections and spikes, note that when testing multimode links, there will not typically be any splice points, but there will be a first and last connector in the span. So leave the connections as two and change the spliced to zero. Next, under the Fast Test Pass Fail tab, you can create or see the pass fail criteria that will be used by the test set to validate the fiber. Note that if an industry standard is selected, such as TIA 568C.3 inside plant, for example, you will not be able to change the pass-fail thresholds. This will assure the user that they have applied the TIA standard to their test measurements. If there are end-user specific pass-fail requirements, the user can select custom and input those requirements. The user can have one or multiple standards applied on the single test measurements. Once the test configuration is created, you will see this as an option that can be selected at any time in the future. You can also export this test configuration, send it by email to another technician, and they can import this test configuration into their test set. They will be testing to the same criteria. Once you close the test configuration window, you will see the selected configuration in the bottom left corner, as well as the fiber type, bidirectional test, and any pass-fail standard selected. On the main screen, you will select Set New Reference. This will allow you to start the reference process with your reference grade multimode jumpers. You also notice that under Reference, what was selected for the referencing step is showing. You will be now setting a new reference. Once you select Set New Reference on the main screen, you will see that both the one test cord and reference grade test cords is already selected. That's because the configuration file that was created specified both these options. Once you select Next on the method screen, you will start the reference steps. Follow the animated prompts using the two 945 units side by side. Once you have gone through the entire reference process, you will go on the verification of the process and finally ready to start testing. Select Finish once you have gone through all the steps. After creating or selecting the appropriate test configuration, select Identification from the main screen and input the project-specific information and needed data. This can be fiber ID, job ID, company name, operator, etc. This information will remain in the main unit until updated prior to the next job. The fiber ID will auto-increment after each test that is stored. 
To start the fiber ID number back to one or any other number needed, highlight the number in a keyboard will pop up on screen so you can input the right number. The User Preferences tab allows the user to select where the test files will be stored, the distance unit, and how to set up the main unit to automatically store measurements. Distance unit can be in feet, miles, kilometers, and meters, based on how the documented report is desired. The destination of the stored files can be on the unit itself in a job-specific folder or even directly to a USB drive that is inserted in the test set. Before pressing the Start button, here is a quick recap of what should be done before proceeding. Correct configuration file selected. Identification has been set up with correct file and job data. The user preferences have been set, including file destination. Proper connection has been made. The test cord on the main from the source port to the fiber port 1 and the test cord plugged into the power meter port into fiber port 2 with the remote side plugging in their jumpers. You are now ready to start testing. You can then select Start on the main unit by following the prompts. Both the main and remote units will see the test results from Fiber 1 and Fiber 2. Based on the loss measurements DB, you will see a green value, pass, or a fail value, red. A failing measurement means there is more loss measured in the fiber span than allowed in the test configuration selected. A green value means the loss is within the test configuration selected. This completes the unidirectional A to B test for fibers 1 and 2. Then, follow the prompt to test the B to A side. So, as the A to B unidirectional test is done, you will be prompted to flip the test cords. On the main side, you take the fiber from port 1 and move it to port 2 and you move the fiber from port 2 over to port 1. The remote side is instructed to do the same. Once the test set detects that the fibers are connected, you will be prompted to continue. Finally, once the fibers have been tested, you will have a bidirectional test done on the two fibers, duplex, and the results will show on the screen. Once you have done the bidirectional duplex test, if the results are within specified loss measurements, select Store at the bottom of the screen. This puts the measurement into a list of stored, but not saved, measurements. The test kit will then be ready for the next two fibers. To view your results, select the Details tab. This will allow you to see the A to B and the B to A measurements. This also allow you to validate that a bidirectional duplex test was done on the two fibers. Under the Result tab, the images below show the results of what has been stored. Here you can look at what has been tested and stored, but not saved. Once you see that all your tests are done and listed, then select Save and all the tests will be saved on the unit in one file. If there is a failed span, you can go back, fix the issue and retest that span using the same fiber number and data. Highlight the failed span and select Test again. Also, as you select Save, a keyboard and destination window will show on the screen. This allows the user to be sure they are sending the file to the correct location on the test set or USB and it is named properly for future use. When creating a report, the user can generate a PDF report directly on the test set or transfer the results to a USB drive for report creation using Fast Reporter 3. When using Fast Reporter 3, the user can merge the OLTS results with other test data. Additionally, the technician can transfer the 945 OLTS file to Fast Reporter 3 for result analysis. This software also enables the generation of a PDF report, which is equivalent to the one created directly on the test set. Furthermore, the OLTS results can be integrated with OTDR or IOLM files to enhance the comprehensiveness of the reports. Here is a quick overview of what you should find in the report. Job information. Fiber type tested. Worst loss between the bidirectional tests. Reference method used in quality of test cords. Industry standard used for pass-fail criteria. A to B main remote results. And fiber length.